Hello students, uh, welcome to this uh, video where we're going to be solving problems about linear momentum. Uh, first, I want to invite you to uh, subscribe to my channel so you can receive notifications, you know, every time that we just create a new video. In the first exercise, they say that an electron of mass 9.1 times 10 to a negative 31 kilograms is moving in the xy plane. Its speed is 2.0 times 10 to the fifth meters per second, and its direction of motion makes an angle of 25 degree with the x-axis. They say, what are the components of the momentum of the electron? Well. In this case, we know, you know that uh, the linear momentum, there is a vector, is equal to the product of the mass times the velocity of the particle. If we want to express the linear momentum in terms of, you know, is uh, x and y components, where we have that the linear momentum P would be equal to P sub xi plus P sub y j. So what we have to do, we have to calculate P sub x and P sub y. So the linear momentum in the x direction, P sub x, would be equal to the mass times the x component of the velocity of the particle. So this would be mass times b cosine of zeta, where zeta is the angle that in this case is 25 degree between the velocity and the x-axis. If you substitute over there, you know, you will get that this would be 9.1 times 10 to a negative 31 kilograms times the velocity that in this case we said there is 2.0 times 10 to the fifth meters per second times the cosine of 25 degree so basically, this will be equal to uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 25 kilograms meters per second. And this is the value of P sub x. Then we find P sub y. That is mass b sub y, that is mass b sine of zeta. So you are is equal to sorry to 9.1 times 10 to a negative 31 kilograms times 2.0 times 10 to a negative sorry times 10 to the 5 meters per second times the sine of 25 degree. So P sub y would be in this case uh, equal to 7.7 .7 times 10 to a negative 25 7.7 times 10 to a negative 25 kilograms meters per second. So now we're ready then to write over linear momentum P in terms of the components as linear momentum is equal to then we can say 1.6 times 10 to a negative 25 I plus uh, 7.7 .7 times 
then to a negative 25J and all this is in kilograms meters second. So this is in this case the solution for this exercise. It was a very easy exercise where the question was basically to find the components of the momentum of the given electron. So we knew the mass of the electron, we knew the velocity, we knew the angle of the trajectory. So we were able to find easily, you know, the components of P. Now we have a second exercise here. To say that a soccer player kicks a ball and send it flying with an initial speed of 26 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees the mass of the ball is 0 0.43 kilograms you don't consider you know friction there and they ask you what is the initial momentum of the ball they ask you what is the momentum when the ball reaches the maximum height of the trajectory and they ask you what is the momentum when ball, the re when ball returns to the ground and they say is the final momentum the same as the initial momentum so we know that this ball will be describing a parabolic trajectory as we don't have air resistance okay then we have a symmetric trajectory so you say the parabola, you know, describe it is symmetric. So the launching velocity and the launching angle are going to be equal to the landing velocity and the landing angle. Except, you know, uh, in the sign of the Y component of the velocity, because when you're launching the wall, when you're kicking the ball, the y component of the velocity points forward when you have the ball landing or just almost hitting the ground the y component of the velocity will be negative so it will be pointing downward remember that in the motion of a projectile the x component of the velocity is always constant so based on those facts right that we know we can say in this case to answer the first part that the linear momentum of uh, the ball, the initial linear momentum of the ball, will be of course p sub x i plus p sub y j. So this would be mass b sub zero x, you know, cosine of zeta i plus mass b sub zero so, sorry b sub zero no b sub zero x if i say b sub zero x cosine of zeta i there is a problem there you know because b sub zero x is b sub zero cosine of zeta right so we must say just hmm b sub zero right so we say b sub zero here sorry and same the story here for a b sub zero y so that is just b sub zero sine of zeta now So this would be, you know, in this case, so this is J, the expression to find the initial linear momentum, right? So this would be the linear momentum P would be the mass, there is 0 0.43 kilograms times the initial velocity, there is 26 meters per second times the cosine of the angle that is cosine of 30 degree i plus now 0 0.43 
kilograms times 26 meters per second there is the initial velocity right times the sine of 30 degree J so you can calculate the linear momentum here you know at the initial or the initial momentum when the when the ball just is kicked out you can find that this is 9.7 i plus 5.6 j in kilograms meters second so this is the initial linear momentum now in the second part they say what is the linear momentum when the wall uh, when the wall reaches the maximum height of the trajectory what well, we know here at the maximum height of the trajectory is that by here is zero so there is only velocity in the x direction or speed in the x direction right so basically what happens is that the linear momentum the component of the linear momentum the y-axis will be zero and the component of the linear momentum in the x-axis is not going to change so at the maximum height of the trajectory we we have you know that uh, the linear momentum would be 9.7i plus 0.0j kilograms meters per second right why because we know that in this case the y component of the linear momentum will be zero why because we have that by in this case is zero and in the last part they ask you to find the momentum when they will return to their ground and as I was explaining at the beginning the issue here is that you have a change in the direction of the uh, y component of the velocity right when the wall is just going up during the trajectory you have here by and you have here bx and be white points outward. When the wall is just falling, you have exactly the same value of Vx here, but now Vy is pointing lower. So after passing through this point, there is the maximum height. The direction of the y component change. So the only thing that is going to change, you know, in the linear momentum would be the sign of the y component of the linear momentum because b y would be negative now. But the magnitude is not going to change because the uh, trajectory is parabolic and is symmetric. So we're going to have basically here that the linear momentum when the wall is landing would be 9.7i. minus 5.6 j in kilograms meters per second now if you say like in this case is the final momentum the same of the initial momentum well the magnitude of the final and remember the linear momentum is a vector so the magnitude of the final momentum is equal to the magnitude of the initial momentum but the direction of the initial momentum and the, mo and the direction of the final momentum are not the same right so the angle of respect the uh, positive x-axis is, is going to change but in terms of magnitude they will have both the uh, same magnitude well i hope that this video just help you to understand a little bit more about linear momentum 
we're going to be recording more videos about linear momentum and again I invite you to subscribe to my channel so that you can get notifications of new videos that we're going to be recording soon have a very good day